Bingo, I'm Jay Fidel. We're back here at ThinkTech for the three o'clock rock. And this is our bodies, our hearts, and communities with aloha from Dr. Dean Nelson. Dr. Dean Nelson is a chiropractor, but he thinks about meditation and he thinks about the greater good. I know this. I know him well <laughs> enough to tell you that. Welcome to the show, Dean. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Jay. Let me tell you, um, you know, my concern about, um, you know, the, the post-Walden Pond world. Okay. Post-Walden Pond. All right. <clears throat> there was a time when you could sort of get out and go to Walden Pond and hole up in a quiet place. Right. And be right. alone with your thoughts. Right. And know yourself better. Right. And thus know your world better. But we live in the nuclear age. And there are demands made on us in every way, every day, in so many ways. And social media and the computer, the internet, they, right. they really haven't brought us closer to Walden Pond. They've taken us further away from Walden Pond. And we can't escape anymore. There's, there's no big outback really available to us. I mean, even if you wanted to do that, it's just harder and harder to do it. So you harder live, and harder, yes. Yeah, you live in a... You live in a in a in an urban society, even if you're not particularly in an urban setting. Yes, <clears throat> and that means that there's pressure on you all day, mm -hmm. in so many ways. You cannot escape it because no, especially today, no man or woman is an island. We all have our mm -hmm. little place mm -hmm. in a fast-moving world, mm -hmm. and this puts huge stress on us. Huge. This doesn't give us a chance to breathe. And when that happens, we have to find consolation somewhere. Right. We do have to heal. Right. We have to have a moment to think it through because we're mammals and mammals need a moment. Okay. So you're into this. I know you are. So tell me your thoughts about this problem. I mean, to the extent you agree or disagree. And tell me, you know, what, what, how should I look at this? Well, I, I don't think there's a ever been a greater opportunity or message to, of how to find peace and how instantaneously it can be. So I don't know that I think Walden Pond is more difficult at all. If anything, I think it's more accessible. You know that thing that peace starts with yourself. So I, I think in terms of the bigger and smaller picture, it's an individual commitment to find good heartedness and a way of um, settling yourself into your heart on an individual le level, moment to moment, or at least some reminders that helps you throughout the day to do that. So to me, Walden Pond's exactly present right now at the end of the outbreath. And at the end of the outbreath, all there is this wonderful man with a beautiful smile on his face and, and us trying to f help the world in some small way. So I don't think Walden Pollard is far away at all. If anything, it's the demand is, is looking good for the stock of Walden Pond. Peace is on our minds. I want to talk about help, help the world, because uh, you know, I began with my reference to the, the common good. Yes. And uh, you know, at, at ThinkTech, we truly believe in the common good. We want to mm -hmm. work for the common good. We want everybody to be mindful and have that as their priority to work for the common good. So. <clears throat> you know, it's get out of your silo, get out of a sort of avaricious way of looking at, mm -hmm. at, at, at the capitalist society we live in and, and find, you know, a, a kind of way of doing business, real business, um, that, that uh, is, is constructive for you mm -hmm. and for the people around you, okay? Nothing fancy. Right. Not meditation necessarily, but just having a value on the common good. Um, mm -hmm. So how can I exercise that? Is it just that I get in the elevator and I say hi to the people in the elevator. That does them a turn, you know, they like that. Right. People like having hi from strangers. Yes. They like having somebody exercise mm -hmm. a little contact and, and making, um, you know, make it, making, making, recognizing them, recognizing their existence and all that. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that if you go through your day mm -hmm. saying hi to strangers, and smiling at people mm -hmm. and having conversations that are positive, constructive conversations with the people mm -hmm. around you, you'll have a better day and you'll be spreading your powdered happiness to everyone you meet. However, I'm not sure that's what you're talking about. Oh, I definitely think it's what I'm talking about on some level. But how you say hi or the presence that you say hi with is very, very important. If it turns into something where you're trying to get some feedback for it, like, aren't I swell? I'm saying hi to you. That's a whole different thing than actually being heart-to-heart -heart with somebody and sincerely seeing the goodness in them. 
So I think some of it has to do with training, quite frankly, how you're training yourself to be present, how you're training yourself to be full of love. How do you do that? Well, I think there's three, there's a couple, first thing, I think the thing is you've got to figure out how you get your body and your mind in one place. And I know that sounds awful, awful simple. But why do I need my body for this? Why, 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 is, why isn't my mind adequate for it? Well, it wouldn't be except for this, the deal you, you, you drew up or the deal you made by giving a human form is that you've got a body. So you might as well learn how it is to inhabit that because all kinds of wonderful things happen as soon as you inhabit your body. It happens to me. That does me a good turn. No, no. But it doesn't necessarily do you a good turn. It absolutely changes. Tell me the, how that works. Changes the environment. It's, even from us, to, uh, if we say aloha to each other with, with really that in our hearts and minds, it stops the show. If we say it as some sort of cursory, uh, meaningless uh, gesture, it does nothing. So you're in your body, your mind and body. How you pick your nose is different. How you pick up a pen is different. How you move, how the vibration that you move through the world is, the wave that you create. Uh, the whole decorum that you bring to the game is different once your mind is in your body. So you're saying that if my mind and my body are together, right. then when I address you in the elevator or on the street and smile at you and all that and offer you, you know, offer you some, mm, mm, some sustenance, you know, spiritual sustenance by being nice to people who are strangers. Right. Then I'm going to be able to do a better job doing that. If my mind and body are the same. Well, there's together. no, there's no. I don't think there's any question about that. There's a whole difference. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Whole different, whole different thing going on there. So, yeah, I don't think there's any. But it's quite a bit of work. Mostly we traipse, kind of treat our bodies like they're pets you could see we kind of traipse them around after us and we chatter ourselves all day long every once in a while with brushing we teeth we might even realize that we have a body that we haven't really taken care of nor been in all day so i think believe it or not in terms of things we spoke of before and stress the first thing is just literally how to bring your mind to your body and all of a sudden you just go oh i belong to this planet and it rocks this is a rock and great place is it just really because, a, just because you bring your mind and body to one place. Let me be the gadfly for a oh. moment. It's a rockin' great place, <laughs> but if I, if I go down my little list of picadillos, uh -huh. I find a lot of things about this planet are on the decline. I mean, start with climate change, right, and then go to Trump. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> maybe they're the same thing. You have a Trump card, or <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know, there's a lot of things. You know, there's 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 killing in Africa, there's, there's the Middle East is coming apart. Um, Europe, you know, arguably is having a hard time. Um, right. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are, you know, I, I don't want to be nostalgic about it, but there's a lot of things that at least apparently seem to be not as good as they used to be. And I'm not saying let's make the world great again for democracy right. or anything. Right. I'm just saying that, that you worry about a huge devolution decline now perhaps more than we worried about such things in the past. So it's hard for me to, you know, put my mind and body together and say, wow, this is a great world. Right, well, there's part of me who wants to go, wow, you know, I don't, I actually, again, I really don't believe that in some sense. You know, if you, there's a Harvard, I think his name is Pink, Pink, Pinkerton, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna come. He wrote a book, less crime, less murder, less wars, more people fed on the planet, a higher standard of living, more, more uh, uh, education than ever has been on the planet. That message doesn't get out. And Buckminster Fuller, another man that I'm sure you enjoy, if we create this problem, we can figure out a solution to it. End of story. So I, I'm, not a, I'm not a pessimist on this one. I'm, I don't think I'm Pollyanna. I certainly see all the blatant and horrible problems you're speaking of, but I also think the way, the way out is, the, is in that the first thing we got to do is figure out inside how we touch our own hearts, how do we touch our own aloha. How, how do, do I know it? I've done that? How do I know I've done You know, I say, gee, I just had, a, you know, half an hour with Dean Nelson, <laughs> and he told me that I had to, you know, use aloha, touch uh -huh. my own heart, uh -huh. and integrate myself, body and mind, and mm -hmm. I would feel better, be more effective, and so forth. So my question to you is, how do I know I have achieved that? Is it a nirvana kind of thing where it's a switch, on or off, you have it or you don't? No. Or is it a grayscale where you have a little but you want more, or you have a lot and maybe you don't need that much? Um, how, you know, how exactly do you know where you are on the continuum? I, I think the first thing is you know because you're happier. 
I, I know that might sound trite, but let's do this together. You, it was, you threw down the gauntlet, the change. So here, let's do this. Go from here, right here, right now, to here, right here, right now. How do you do that? You just did it. You go, see, we're talking heads. We're really tired of being talking heads. We really want to reside more in our hearts. So I challenge, go ahead, just drop down from heart and well, see. I think if you're saying, no, I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree. If you're saying, be aware that you're breathing. No, I'm saying drop your consciousness from up here to here. Focus on your chest. Just focus right here in your heart. Okay, you're beating heart in your, in your chest. Yeah, you keep not doing it, though. I'm asking you to do it with me, and you will know. Just do it. How do I know I'm focusing on my heart? How, how just will I know drop this? your mind down to your heart. Drop your mind down to your heart. Why do you say drop? Because, uh, is we, your, is because your heart lower than Because your head? we're all up here prattling to ourselves all the time. And as soon as you're daring enough to actually bring yourself to your heart, the whole world changes instantly. And you will know. And you, you do it all the time. That's why you're touched by your world. That's why aloha happens. But it really is a physical thing of dropping your consciousness from up here <laughs> to here. And all of a sudden, you see me different. So, I see you different. So what, what do you, when you drop your consciousness to your heart, heart. Mm -hmm. how, how do you know that you have done that? You will, you, you glow instantly inside. You grow. Glow. 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 Yeah. You're a glow worm. <laughs> instantly you and get what, happy. What does this mean? I mean, you're, you're, you're glowing, you're happy. Yeah, well, yeah. and then problems, you know, the Einstein's famous quote, you don't solve the problems with the mind that created it. So you're up here cranking out, da, da, da. You go down here and you go, oh, a whole nother wisdom comes out. Uh, what oh, I hear you saying is that <clears throat> here I am. I've got a, I'm a student. I have a test in the morning. Right. I'm so stressed out about right. this. And if I don't pass this test, I'm going to be in right. terrible shape. Right. So stop, Jay. Stop studying. Yes. Put your, your heart and your mind together. You know, go down to your heart. Live in your heart and you'll feel better. But, but I'm not studying anymore. No. I've, I've used that technique to avoid actually studying, and I won't be as well prepared for the test in the morning. You've probably had all those right answers. Now it's your mind being relaxed enough to come up with them. Probably all the answers are already <laughs> in you for a long shot. <laughs> But I'm not saying this is what I think the point of what you're saying is what we're not talking about esoteric training. We're not talking about that. We're saying, how are you going to solve these problems? Well, it isn't to me by two talking heads talk, trying to out-talk each other or two talking heads trying to out-think each other. It's about two human beings being daring enough to go in their heart and say, wow, how do we solve this, my friend? That's going to change the world. That does change the world instantly. Is it easy? Is it comfortable? No, it's an embarrassingly vulnerable and powerful place to live from. And I, I don't do it very often. Don't get me wrong. Even after really being intensely into this for years, it's, it's almost an embarrassingly vulnerable and powerful place to be. But it's instant. You can do it instantly. You can do it at home. You just go, Phew. you drop down, you go, and all of a sudden your life just goes, oh my gosh. This actually reminds me of what we do in every talk show. We, we take a break. Yeah. Watch how instant this can be. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what is likeable about science. We bring on scientists of all ilk, astronomers, physicists, chemists, biologists, ecologists, and they talk about their work and more importantly, they talk about why you should talk about their work, why you should think about their work, why you should like their work. I help them bring out why their work is understandable, why it's meaningful, why people should care about it, why people should support science. We have a good time. We talk about current uh, events of interest. We talk about uh, historical events sometimes. We dig deep into their research, why they do, what the joys and delights and frustrations of their work are. and. In all, we, we show a, a real world of science, a real world of likable science. I hope you'll join us every Friday at 2 p.m. Hey, we're back from our break. We, we feel better. We've had a chance to <laughs> <laughs> ruminate a little bit. 
and uh, you know, you sort of get off the point, stop focusing on the things that you know that we were focusing on. We've we've changed our scope a little bit. But you know, I like to I like to dwell on another point you mentioned, okay. and then where where we agreed to disagree, namely the word aloha. Okay. Okay. Um, what was it? Ho'opono pono was another another word for right. healing and all that. Right, right. Mm, that I, you know, I feel that aloha is a word that is elusive in our in our time because everybody uses it, uh -huh. use it for so many things, um, and um, I just don't feel that it has personal or spiritual meaning to me anymore. Right. It is uh, a hello goodbye and all right. that. Right. Right. And it is a sort of vague thing about. Uh, you know, having having a, a kindly relationship with someone, right? Um, but it is not; mm, it has no curative properties, and um, it is not, you know, a, a solution to the ills of the world. Right? Do you feel differently about that? On many levels. Well, yes, I do actually. First of all, in terms of a brand, it just in terms of branding, uh, it is the most. An extraordinary brand I think in the world or one of those that you can say it's a showstopper I get the privilege of traveling on occasion as I'm, I hope you do as well and all over the world you say the word loha something changes so I know here and I'm not questioning that it's been trivialized and overused to the point of almost it justifying any number of things but it is our brand it is what there is no other place on the planet where you get to say something that's pretty equivalent to, I see the highest spirit in you, I bless that, I want to share that with you, then on these islands. This is what we have to bring to the world, is this upliftedness of kindness, of love, of compassion. Again, as just in terms of a brand, there's nowhere from well, I, Nairobi I, I to... I wouldn't disagree with that. To, to the Eskimos. You know, I have great fun, you know, mm -hmm. you're on the phone and doing mail order, yeah. mm -hmm. talking to some official, somebody right. far away from Hawaii. Right. Um, talking to uh, one of our Skype guests, who yeah. could be anywhere in the world. Right, it's a showstopper. And mm -hmm. I say, at the uh, the end of the conversation, I say aloha. Yeah. It is a showstopper. Yeah. People don't know how to cope with that. Yeah, you, and they know people gender, don't know how to don't cope that you're bringing you, it to a spiritual... You always hear right. a hesitation. What? Right. what did he say? Well, right, right, right. And then they go, aloha back, and you go, and boom, you go, all right, you just brought in spiritual upliftedness, kindness, compassion, love into the show. That is our product in Hawaii. That is how we... It's, it's really fun to do that, by the way. It is fun to do that. And, I, and, and I, you know, I, I don't mean to trivialize it, but it, it literally can change the world. We're the only place that has a, a word that's based on love that, that, that we're saying to each other constantly. This reminds me of Warren, Warren Price. Uh, he's a lawyer, and for a time he was the president of the Bar Association. He was uh -huh. the attorney general of the state for a while. Uh -huh. And he invented this thing which I thought was humorous and relevant to our discussion. Okay. So you go to court, you're a lawyer, you go to court, and the judge hands it to you. I mean, he rules against you yeah. completely. Right. And Warren, Warren's favorite reaction was, he would say, mahalo, your honor. <laughs> and, and in there, okay. there'd be this huge irony. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for giving it to me, Judge. Yeah, he was Vaseline. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was, it, you know, mahalo can mean many things, but well, yeah. he, he brought new meaning to the word <laughs> mahalo. Right. And maybe you could, you know, apply the same kind of analysis to the word aloha. Um, I, I'm, I'm not comfortable with that, really, but I, but I think that uh, it's it's hard to find continuing value in it the use of these Hawaiian words when they have been, they have been overused. And uh, I just wonder if you can, if you can use it, I mean, when I tell a mail order guy or, mm -hmm. the, or the guest or the clerk mm -hmm. or whoever on the mainland, a word that they never ever use in their lives, maybe they have never heard anyone actually say it to them yeah. in their lives. Yeah. Now, you know, they don't know what to do with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's cute, it's fun, it's sharing, but it doesn't really, it doesn't really pass the aloha to them, you know. I, I'm not sure that I, I think words are very, very powerful, and the word, and I think in Hawaiian language that's very, very much thought. I think the vibration of aloha is a vibration itself that is a showstopper. Yeah. Again, 
I don't think there's any other place in the world that gets to have love be one of the predominant factors. Suppose I have a business deal. Suppose I have a business deal. Okay. I have a business deal, and the okay. other guy rips me. He just, yeah. he, it's a, it's right. a win-lose. Right. It's not a zero-sum. He, right. he's, he's really got to hurt me, right. and he got to take advantage of me and uh, do right. all kinds of morally uh, you know, offensive things to me, and, and, and he wins. You know, yeah. it happens. Yeah. And because I, I, wasn't, I wasn't meeting him there at that, at that level of aggression. Um, now, I, I have trouble feeling aloha for that person. I have trouble, you know, you, you're probably going to tell me, no, you have to feel aloha even for no, your no, enemies. No, 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 even well, for people well, of who course. abuse you. Of course, of course, because you, you ultimately want to win. You ultimately want to win. And you, you said at, at, at the break that you believe in the basic goodness of people. Somewhere inside himself, he, he's, he's laid a, a doogie, you could say, or he's, he's, he's done a bad deed. He's done a bad. It, it somewhere he himself or that that person is still built from kindness and love it's just he's been mistaken grossly mistaken in thinking that he betters himself by winning by putting somebody else down that doesn't lower your game nor should it really necessarily lower how you look at that person it's just like you got to play a longer game with that person mm -hmm. by long game I mean it might take a while or some incident usually it's pain of devastating sorts that actually brings us to our heart and sooner or later that guy will encounter if nothing else death and that's a pretty big showstopper like whoa what did I really make of my life so of course there's people doing bad things but that doesn't make people bad it, the fundamental goodness of people the fundamental kindness of people is still there it's just hidden pretty thoroughly sometimes right well how do you bring it out I mean is it well, there's all kinds of skillful, skillful ways of bringing that out. You, you do that very, very well. 1944. Yeah. I'm in Amsterdam. I saw a great right. movie called Black Book, if you have a chance okay. to see it. It's on Netflix. Okay. And there are Nazis there who are occupying you right. know, Holland and who are doing really, really bad things. So bad that they're even doing corruption in the Nazi party itself. Mm -hmm. That's how bad. Okay. And you see them in this movie, you see them doing this. And forgiving them is hard. Oh, finding oh. value in them is hard. Oh, yes. I mean, every mother would mm -hmm. love her son, mm -hmm. but it's hard for a third person to actually feel good about right. what these guys are doing. Right. And so, how do you deal with that? Do you feel love for him? On some level. On some on some level, I do. I mean, you know. They say that Tibetans have not had the post-traumatic stress disorder that are showing up in our troops and other war, war situations because they protect themselves with compassion while they're being beaten. They're actually looking at the person that's beating them and said, oh, you poor man, to be that distorted of mind to try to get pleasure by hurting some other person. And they're actually protected by that. And last year I actually got invited by our Marine Corps to teach loving kindness as a protectant, as a resilience for mind and heart to our warriors so they wouldn't suffer so much from post-traumatic stress disorder. So I'm not sure that totally answers your question. I I'm afraid I probably took no, it but in No, but it's worth pursuing, though. So here's somebody who has the least the possibility of post-trauma uh, dis disorder. Yeah. Um, and um, you're going to try to help him or her. Mm -hmm. And so you show him that there's good in everyone and um, that they shouldn't feel that way. They should. No, no, no. Turn the other cheek. No, what no, is no, it? no. There's no shoulds. There's no shoulds. It's as simple as what we did together is that this is an experience that you have inside your own self. As soon as you bring your mind to your body with breath and just be here, something changes about how you belong on the planet. It's not theory. It isn't that you have to convince somebody. You may have to ask them time and time again, take time to do this. Invest in this simple techniques. Invest in dropping from your head into your heart throughout the day. See how it changes your day. I always say, here's the only thermometer. Are you happier? When you have your mind and body in one place, the whole world lights up. You're happier. So you say, wow, I like that better room. rather than this. I like this. Rather than... Okay, how like do you this. integrate that feeling of peacefulness to getting the job done? I mean, in this, in, in think tech, um, you know, we do 35 talk shows yes. a week. 
Right. People are coming and going. We have to be on time. We have to do the job right. right. Has to look good. We can't afford to mess up. Um, and the stress in all of that. Yeah. So how can I relax and feel at one at the same time get the job done? It'll fall apart, won't it? No. You really want to take three breaths. And everything gets easier. Just do that. Just start there with three breaths between each interview. And then ask me to come back and see if it, you do that. Doggone you. That worked. I like that. Or what you just did there is the natural thing that we do. We laugh. We smile. We uplift ourselves from the side that way. But if you're asking for, t put slogans up. Be present. Love your life. Put slogans up. Do silly things like that. Now you're good at this. You've been doing this, thinking about this. You know, seeing the value of meditation for a long time. But aren't there moments, Dean Nelson, when you have a bad day, oh. when you lose it, when you can't think to your heart, where you're ticked off at somebody right. or yourself, yep. and your karma is really yeah. on the negative? Yeah, I call it when the wind's above 50. I say, above 50, there's no brave sailors. <laughs> you know, there, everybody's, I say, I call it strapping to your mass technique. But, but you know, there is still an awareness. You know you're actually in, Morris in a nightmare. You're, you're in a, a mind-body nightmare. You're having some sort of, we call a clasher attack. You have a monster in your face. It could be hatred, could be fear, could be panic, could be anything. I say you strap yourself to the mask and you just say the simple thing. Come on, good buddy, you ugly monster. Come on and sit in my house and be ugly right here. And you just don't try to change anything. You literally don't try to change anything about this nightmare. You just step back. You don't do any technique. You don't do any love and light. You just say, come on in, old buddy. Tell you what, put your feet up and be a slob. Matter of fact, mess up my room. And you just sit there like with a friend. And so, yeah, I have those, I have those all the time where I just get eaten alive by some emotional situation or where I'm wrong or I have to blame or I'm self-righteous. In this conversation you talk about, yeah. are you actually talking with yourself? Yes, I do. Yeah, self, because it's another technique. It's another technique where I'm going, okay, I'm in the poops here. I'm, I'm not seeing life right. I'm absolutely not seeing life right. It is distorted. My reality is distorted with anger right now. So I say, come on in, old buddy. Make yourself at home as long as you great big ugly bean want to be here. <laughs> and what happens? The doggone thing changes. It never stays the same. You can't even keep up a good hurricane in your own mind because you're based on goodness. You're based on aloha. <laughs> New way of looking at things. Dr. Dean Nelson, our hearts, our bodies, our communities, aloha putting it all together. Thank you so much, Oh, Dave. no. It's been my pleasure. Thank you, Jay. Aloha. Oh, yeah, to you. In every way. <laughs> In every way. <laughs>